Well, I got lucky in some ways. A lot of pieces fell into place for me because, um, well, it so happens that Mikael Crampon, a French researcher, came and brought came to Tufts and brought a project that he thought would be good for a student, and I kind of got really interested in it quickly and. And then all of a sudden Boris is coming to France and, you know, he's got this really sympathetic position as the chair Jean Merlet and it made a lot of sense for me at the time to come and, you know, take, take advantage of this opportunity to work with French researchers and uh, work with Boris very closely and take advantage of this beautiful, you know, sympathetic environment for working. So it, I, I feel so grateful to Boris and everyone at, at the CERM for giving me such such an opportunity because it really is, has been a turning point in my mathematical career. I study uh, kind of an intersection of two different different fields um, that I really, really love both at, in their own way, but I love the way they meet in the dynamics of a Hilbert geometry. But I, I study, so I study non-uniformly hyperbolic dynamical systems and in the context of real convex projective structures, um, in particular the non-strictly convex flavor, which has non-uniformly hyperbolic behavior. Um, so for now my thesis is very focused on the intersection between these, but um, I'd love to study deeper each of those worlds, uh, like the deformation spaces of these geometric objects and the general theory of non-uniform hyperbolicity, um, in which Boris, of course, is expert. So I I came here with a with an explicit project and a concrete you know objective um, that you know, of course I have to thank I can't thank Mikhail Krampon enough for bringing me <laughs> that concrete objective, but um, uh, so I was able you know I was working on it before I came, but really started breaking ground when I had the time to work closely with, with Boris, and I had a lot of space and, and time to do that here. Um, and then, you know, I had other researchers nearby that I could talk to here and there, and they could kind of push ideas for me and, you know, send me on new and creative directions. Um, a lot of both dynamicists and, you know, Patrick is both a dynamicist and an expert in Hilbert geometries. Um, but then uh, I also had this incredible opportunity, for which I'm so grateful, to work with Mikhail Crampon closely in the re with the Research in Pairs program. And from there, we took s the stuff that I had already done and pushed it to a really, really new level, um, which was a really cool experience. Um, and it was really interesting to, to really see the mind of a mathematical genius closely for two straight weeks and to see how a researcher works. I learned so much from him, not just, not just mathematically, but also intuitively, and just, you know, what kind of approach we should be taking into this, this process, which is more of a creative process than, than many people perceive it to be. Um, you know, math and math research, you, th you think about crunching numbers in computers, but it's, it's so much more than that. It's almost an art, in a way, and the way that you attack a problem um, it was cool to see, to work with someone closely on that. Uh, I really, uh, I really enjoyed my time here. Uh, not just the environment, and I mean, it's beautiful and incredible. Um, I also love running, and I love the sport, and I love the sun, so that was, that was really cool. But, um, also the, the opportunity to work here, um, it's, I mean, it's been really great. Everyone has been so helpful and uh, has, has, I don't know how to say, <laughs> but, uh, you know, anytime, uh, you know, something came up, someone is around the corner helping me before I even realized that I needed something. And I mean, that just eases the, the working process, the research process that just, you know, I was, I was so productive with, uh, with that type of environment around me. Um, the opportunity to work closely with Boris every week, um, and often, <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, you know in, in Tufts, he's a busy guy. Here he's a busy guy too, let's be real, but um, uh, it's, it's been really great to be able to work closely with him, but also Patrick Foulon, 
with Michael Crampon, you know, the French researcher who brought this project to me, and um, also to be able to travel to conferences in Europe, which is not so expensive coming from Marseille, but is completely unrealistic coming from Boston, unless, you know, you have, you get lucky, you have a grant, or the conference has a lot, you know, but that's, that was a really cool experience. I, I was able to kind of get a feel for the European math culture and community and um, I felt, you know, I really felt the deep history with mathematics that France has and, uh, and they're very strong for good reason and it was really cool to be able to see that firsthand in the departments in Marseille and Paris and Strasbourg. I'm, I mean, Boris has seen even more. But, <laughs> Uh, it's it was yeah an incredible experience and everything really comes together to produce powerful research. Buff for them. <laughs> Just finished my first year of my thesis, um, so after working with Michael Crampon, we pushed a lot of results and there's there was a lot of good stuff that came out of that. So I gotta you know get that down on paper and get that finalized and that's. My immediate objective, of course. Um, from there, um, I have uh, two more years of my thesis, which uh, f I'm not, you know, exactly sure which. D I have a lot of directions I can go from there. Like I said, I could get deeper into the non-uniformly hyperbolic theory, or deeper into the world of real convex projective structures. And from there, I'm. I guess after I finish this, you know, this project up. Uh, I guess I'll follow my heart, see where that takes me. Um, you know, if I have a chance to come back to France, of course I'd be happy to take it, um, to work with some of the people with whom I've made connections here, and to and that could lead me to new projects and, you know, uh, d uh, different paths and a lot of cool stuff that I'd love to be a part of. Uh, when I was in when I was young, math had never really inspired me. I was strong in it, but um, it wasn't what I saw in my future necessarily until I came to the university uh, and my university, Hamilton College in New York. Um, I just, I had a lot of female professors as role models and for some reason I kept taking math classes and eventually it kind of clicked like I'm doing this because I love it and I suddenly realized that math was something I really wanted to pursue and that those role models, those female role models, those professors, they pushed me into mathematics and they really motivated me to take my studies to the next level. Um, I want to give that back to the next generation. So part of why I wanted to continue my studies was because I love math, but also because teaching is important to me. Um, the connection that I made with uh, my professors, I want to make those kinds of connections with the next generation. I'd love to see more women in mathematics. Um, and that would be everywhere in the world. Maybe I find myself in France and I can make those connections here or anywhere in the US. Um, I, I think that uh, after I finish my thesis, uh, of course I want to continue doing research and I'm not sure where you know the career path will take me and it's the trick with our, our profession is we have to follow uh, what, what sort of opportunities we're given. Um, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with traveling and seeing the world and uh, um, I'm also really motivated to incorporate, uh, to be uh, a role model like that as part of my career. Not just a researcher but also a teacher and uh, someone who makes a personal connection with the next generation of researchers and students. <laughs>